You know, you talk about uh, platforms and publishers, and I know it's about content moderating, but yes. uh, uh, there's been, like, I would say, a light controversy surrounding the show. In the sure. Sense that it was um, censored in, in, in Saudi Arabia. Yes. Are we in Saudi Arabia right now? Is this in Saudi Arabia? We're okay. Okay, we're okay. Uh, <laughs> MBS owns the show now. Oh, uh, got it. Oh, okay. um, they own a lot of things. Censored in Saudi Arabia, but, I mean, one of the issues there is that in America, the majority of uh, venues or platforms for free speech or content are privately owned. So, therefore, if they have intrinsic tentacles into the money of other countries or of other businesses, you yes. know, there is a sense of what you can and can't say within that. We don't have... I mean, you could maybe say NPR is the closest thing that we have to, like, a public institution. Isn't that, that is wild? It? Yeah. That's really it. Yeah, it's it's really fascinating. Look, ultimately, our show is a comedy show, but we've also become a case study, given everything that happened with the Saudi Arabia situation. But this is going to be the first of many situations. Think about something like Facebook. Facebook has over 2 billion users. It's bigger than Islam or Christianity. Now, those religions would argue their messenger is stronger, but... It's a big, big, huge platform that's become way bigger than you and I could even imagine. Yeah. Now it's bigger than any sort of country jurisdiction or any of those sort of things. So now these huge media platforms and publishers now have to decide we're going to have to do business with sometimes otherwise questionable characters and how much of our American values of free speech do we impose upon the world and how much do we sort of bend those things? So you're going to start to see over the next few years the Facebooks, Apples, Netflixes, Amazons, Googles all deal with this in real time. Hmm. To what extent do we pre-censor? To what extent do we post-censor? And so I think our, our Saudi Arabia episode was a prime example of what is to come. What did that feel like for you when that happened? What did, what did you have to wrap your head around? Oh, well, I mean, I saw the Bar Barbra Streisand effect happen in real time. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, it became this thing where, like, it was like the Air Jordan 1 band. Like, there, the NBA said, don't look at this shoe, don't wear this shoe, and then it became the shoe that everybody wanted. So, you know, the Saudi Arabia and, and the murder of Jamal Khashoggi became this thing that, yeah, it was a news cycle that had a very short window. But then because of our episode... Which is crazy. I mean, tangentially, it is insane that it's it insane. just had that short yeah, window. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It, it is, is very something crazy. that should be still wildly controversial and sure. talked about and yeah. yeah no but it won't be talked about until there's an eight part mini series and it becomes this highly dramatized thing only on Netflix but <laughs> but it's it's important to know that um sort of that situation brought more attention to it and i think ultimately that's that's a good thing um but as artists really what our responsibility is and as comedians it's just to be as funny as possible, to be as entertaining as possible, and to, and to try to make the news and these things that seem esoteric uh, and confusing palatable. Mm -hmm.